What is going on, Alpha Males? Welcome to the Alpha Male Podcast. The podcast where we talk about what it means to be a man the right way, strong, made in the image of God, and don't apologize, making godly men strong and making strong men godly. All right, men. Today we're going to be talking about tricking out your knife for EDC purposes, for carry purposes. Now, a knife is already quintessential manly tool, right? Throughout history, throughout cultures, throughout time, a knife has been a quintessential tool of a man. And a knife can do many things. From building a shelter, to starting a fire, to skinning an animal and eating it, to defending oneself if need be, it's already very, very versatile. But how can we take that EDC knife and make it even more versatile, right? How can we give it even more utility? So we're going to be talking about today. Now guys, I haven't done it yet, but I'm planning on making a video about this. Obviously, this would be nice to have in a video. I was planning on trying it simultaneously because I'm experimenting with video content. It's a whole other deal to get used to and edit and things like that. But to be honest, the weather kind of sucks outside and about getting the computer and everything wet and all the audio equipment for this. So what I'm planning on doing is shooting a separate video for the patrons. Just like if you listen to the Urban Altoid Survival Tin Escape and Evasion Kit, Did an actual video content for that to go on Patreon. Anyway, all that to say, if you're not a patron, consider checking it out. You can go to the Patreon page. There should be a link in the show notes. And most of the things there are just for patrons. I think four videos just went up this week. However, there are some things on there that everybody can watch. You just have to go to the page. So, again, there should be a link there. Or you can go to goodshepherdtraining.com and there's a Patreon link on that page. Either way, that's all I'm going to say about that. We'll get into the bio and then the main topic. Who am I? A question we should all ask ourselves. I am, first and foremost, a servant of God made in his very own image. A follower of Jesus Christ. A simple man called by God to the Great Commission to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Next, a little bit about my background and what God has allowed me to do and blessed me to do in life. Grew up what most would consider very poor in the backwoods of the southeastern and mid-Atlantic United States, hunting and fishing. Joined the Marine Corps at 17, did a couple of combat tours in Iraq, so a decorated Marine Corps combat veteran, infantry assaultman. After the combat tours, I was an urban warfare instructor for the United States Marine Corps under Mojave Viper. I also served in the U.S. Army both full-time and part-time National Guard. Also a veteran of law enforcement. I served with LAPD. I was a sworn peace officer, a cop for LAPD. I worked regular patrol assignments and more specialized assignments. One of those more specialized assignments was warrant service, fugitive recovery, Also had some other law enforcement roles. I am an FBI certified firearms instructor and been certified by another three-letter government agency in a lot of firearms and training things. I've also been a private contractor, worked in the private sector pertaining to tactics and gunfighting and Protecting America from enemies foreign and domestic. I served as the commander of a tactical team to stop active shooters in a large metropolitan area. That was our primary mission, to stop active shooters, which sadly are a thing in America today. 
I've also been blessed to do quite a bit of competition shooting. Started my first formal competitions even before joining the Marine Corps at 17. I had one more shooting competitions than I can remember. I have competed in all manner of disciplines in shooting. I've been blessed to be a state rifle and pistol champion, West Coast regional champion. Like I said, been blessed to win more shooting competitions than I can remember. I mentioned hunting. I've hunted to put meat on the table starting when I was a child. I've also been a professional big game hunter and guide, hunting and slaying all manner of beast. And I don't apologize for that. Humbled to be the host of three podcasts. Simple Man Sermons, Alpha Male Podcast, and Gunfighter Life. Obviously, as things not mentioned, I've been blessed to do many other things. But, again, first and foremost, I'm a servant. A servant of God, a believer and follower of the Bible, the Word, Jesus Christ. And I don't apologize for that. With that, let's transition into today's topic. So, for years, I carried just a folding knife in my pocket. I may or may not have had a bigger fixed blade knife on my person, obviously. Overseas in the Marines carried a K-bore and or a bayonet. I also had a, what I would consider reasonably sized, somewhere around 4 inch blade fixed blade knife that I carried on my kit for a long time on my chest. Now, if you listen to the bio, if you listen to it before... You'll know that I was the commander of a tactical team. And as part of that, we received training and I did a lot of training with the men. We trained on our spare time as much as we could because we wanted to stay alive and help other people stay alive. Part of that is ground fighting. I think that's something that's a lot of times neglected in the gun fighting community. A lot of fights end up on the ground and a lot of gun fights can end up on the ground as well. A knife is a tool that can be used in those situations. It can be used to make space, to create time. It can be used to get somebody off of you. Anyway, I have a fair deal of ground fighting experience. Never been like a professional MMA fighter or anything like that, but I do have some MMA experience. I do have quite a few years of wrestling experience and other tactical hand-to-hand training and knife fighting. By no means and all be all of knife fighting. I've never done any karambit style of training or anything like that. So I don't want to misrepresent here, but I have a a decent amount, I think. I wish I had more knife fighting experience, but I have some, and I have quite a bit of ground fighting experience and quite a lot of gun fighting experience. If you don't know about the entire other podcast called Gunfighter Life, pretty much my entire adult life in one way or another has usually revolved around being a professional gunfighter in one way or another. Anyway, how this came about is in that training you have a folding knife in your pocket, it's a good thing to have. But if you're wrestling and fighting, a lot of times you don't have both hands free. If you did, you wouldn't by definition be wrestling. You would be free and then you'd have other options like going to your gun or something like that. But if somebody's literally trying to rip a gun out of your holster like we would do in training or on top of you or you're getting your head beat in, which is a thing that happens, right? And let's say you're laying on your side or something is going on, can't get to that gun. Going for your knife, which I carry on my opposite gun side your weak side your support side whatever your non-dominant side whatever you want to call it most people are right-handed as am i carry my handgun on my right side carry my knife on my left side i quickly found that carrying a folding knife in my pocket is pretty hard to get out and deploy even with one of my go-to's for a lot of years a gerber 06 auto which is built like a tank it's a super handy folding knife and very easy to deploy as far as folding knives go But even that is not great when you're trying to get it out of your pocket and deploy it. I discovered that just a small, handy, fixed blade knife for me was a better option. Carrying it in my pocket on my support side with an ulti clip, which I'll probably explain better later. Anyway, it conceals rather well. I run along the inseam of my pants so you can barely see it. If you're really looking for it, you can see it, but I'm also carrying a gun and a magazine, even when I'm working covertly, or even today, as just a member of a well-regulated militia. Right, concealed carrying day-to-day, it conceals. If it conceals my gun, it conceals my knife. 
It's on my support side, and I can literally grab and go. Plug and get to work, as they say. Anyway, a small fixed blade knife is a good option. The two that I carry are not overly heavy. and th In fact, I think they probably weigh less than my old Gerber 06 Auto that I carried for years. Now, I vacillate between two. Probably my favorite one if I had to pick. I'm going to start with that. It's a Topps Mini Tracker. Anybody familiar with the Topps Tracker knife will be familiar with its crazy design. And I got it mostly just to test it out. And it quickly became my go-to fixed blade knife. It's small, it's handy, it's not overly heavy. A lot of Topps knives I think are overbuilt. This one is not overbuilt. It's the Tracker Mini. The exact model of mine is X-2177. It is well used, well worn, it is quite handy. Anyway, I find the shape quite useful and utilitarian in the city and in the country. Deuteronomy 28, blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the country. And wherever I am, I found that knife shape and style very handy. I've found the size of it very handy. It's big enough to be useful for a lot of tasks, including defense, but not so prohibitively big that I won't carry it all the time. So, good knife. Again, starting out, I put the ulti clip on it, which is a way that it goes into the pocket. It deep carries, so it slides deep down into the pocket. So there's just enough of the handle sticking out for me to grab it. It comes with a good Kydex sheath. I attach the ulti clip to it. Now, how do we trick this out? How do we make it more utilitarian? Well, if you've ever been out in the wilderness and done any wilderness survival stuff and survival fishing, which I have done recently, you know it's pretty hard to make a fish hook. You can do it. You can fashion a fish hook. You can... You know, there's all kinds of tips and ways to make a fish hook. But a, a good quality fish hook, like one that you could get probably 10 for a dollar, 10 for a couple of dollars at your nearest big box store or sporting goods store, you're not probably going to make anything that good. And they're small and light and handy. Also, very quickly, you could ground the barb down on a rock, straighten it out, and you have a needle, which is good for repairing stuff. So a lot of utility there. I take that. I take some fishing string, either the regular monofilament line or the spectra, which is stronger and better. But I take that, the ulti clip's already on there. It already has holes in the side of the sheath. So I literally use those holes as kind of an ad hoc spool. And I thread it through there. I get a couple of feet of line, and I tuck that hook behind the ulti clip so that it can't poke anybody, can't poke me. It's not in the way. I don't know what a fishing hook weighs, but it's not very much. I don't think you would ever notice it. So I have a fishing hook, a potential needle, and quite a bit of fishing line on there, which comes in handy. The other thing that I have on there, and this is a much more recent thing, but I would often, I was doing my stints in the wilderness and living off grid, just decide, hey, you know what? I'm going to go find out what's in these patch of woods. It's wilderness. It's wild. There's no roads. I'm just going to go see what's up. And I would pretty much take my EDC a lot of times. And the one thing that I didn't have was a quick way to get clean water. Now, the water where I was in the Pacific Northwest, where I am, is probably safe to drink. But probably is not a great confidence booster. And you can get a lot of sicknesses and things like that from dirty water. So they make these small titanium containers, waterproof, and I mean small and light. They look like they'd be heavy because when you look at it, you think steel, but they're titanium. It weighs very, very little. And the one that I have on this knife holds 10. I could probably shove one or two more in there, but it easily holds 10 of the water purification tablets, which gives me a lot. I think each one of those purifies 32 ounces of water, if I remember off the top of my head correctly. Anyway, it's a quick way that weighs almost nothing to purify a lot of water. So if I find myself out a little bit longer than I would like, I don't have to worry about whether the water is clean or not because I can easily make it clean. Also, it's good for any other kind of disinfecting that you might want, right? If I did get injured and I wanted to clean a wound, it wouldn't be my first choice, but i definitely take some super concentrated solution with some iodine tablets and pour that on a wound before I just leave it.
if I thought I might get infected, right? So a lot of utility there. And again, this thing is tiny. I'm talking maybe 50% larger than a big multivitamin would be. It's got a little hole in it. I've attached that to the sheath because again, the sheath has a bunch of little hollow holes. Most of your Kydex sheaths will have those little hollow holes on there. Why not just put a piece of micro cord through that and through your little titanium holder and hold some extra stuff on there. Also, I've mentioned these before, but the little ferrocium rods that are toggles for your jacket, for your backpack, your bug out bag, like you would have a zipper toggle. Well, they make those that are ferrocium rods. So if you strike them with iron or ceramic or something hard, they create a spark to start a fire. I have one of those on there. I have a way to make clean water. I have a way to make fire. Pretty important. Also, wrapped around that toggle, I have some natural cordage. I, I want to say manila, but I don't think that's it. But anyway, I use this quite often to make fires. It's a really good natural tinder. Now, I never bothered with this when I was in the Southwest in Arizona because it's pretty easy to find dry tinder. In the Pacific Northwest, in the rainforest, it's not so easy to find dry tinder. So I have some on here. And again, it weighs very little. So there's that. And if you've listened for any length of time, like the Manly Skills episode, you know I'm big in a knot tying. So there's a bunch of different knots on this knife. There's probably literally maybe 100 knots on this knife. Most of those are in the lanyard um, on the pinky loop, which I'll get into that on a bigger knife. It'll be better explained on a bigger knife but there's a lot of utility there too mostly if i'm grabbing it to do hard work with it or fight with it it won't slip into my hands and i won't cut my own fingers if i'm shoving it into something there's other utility for it as well but on the toggle on the bottom of the knife i have several feet of micro cord micro cord is like 550 cord but smaller quite a bit smaller it's still i believe 100 pounds the stuff that i have Anyway, I have enough so that if I just unravel this, it's in a big kind of noose knot, so it's all nice and tidy. But if I untie it, I could throw it around my neck and make it a neck knife. If for whatever reason, I didn't have pants or pockets, I would hate to think about what those circumstances might be, but I could make it a neck knife. I made it that long on purpose. Also, I might just want to loan it to somebody. Everybody wears belts and things like that. A lot of people like the neck knife concept. I have tried it. I don't like it. That doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means I don't like it as much as deep pocket carry. But I have enough on there that it could also be a neck knife. And it's a couple of more feet of cordage, which is easy to make. Especially in the environment that I am, there's lots of nettle around to make cordage. But it's nowhere near as good and strong and as handy as actual, whatever it is, I believe, like ballistic nylon micro cord, right? So why not just have a few feet of it? And that's all on the knife. Also, the cool thing about the Tops Tracker Mini, just like the bigger Tops Tracker, it has a saw blade on the back. And some people don't like that on a survival knife. They say it's gimmicky. But I would beg to differ, sir, because I use the crap out of the saw on the back of this thing. It is a good saw. It's not like some afterthought, like some cheap 1980s Rambo knife copy saw. It's a good saw. You can actually cut stuff with it. In fact, the first, it may, the, probably within the first week that I was carrying it, I found a good use for the saw and used it, and it came in really handy. And I kind of thought, you know what, this tracker knife concept really has merit. Anyway, this has that, so you get all the utility of that saw blade. It's a good saw. It also has that swept back blade, which is good for a lot of things. found it really good for cutting rope and cutting cordage, and it's also proven really good on feather sticking which is a really good way to get dry tinder. If everything is wet, you take a stick that's dead and you scrape off the outer layer that's wet and hopefully the inside is dry and you make these long curls with it to start your fire. I found that swept back blade really good for that. It's kind of like a sickle. It does really good for drawing back. Anyway, it is a little bit harder to sharpen, so you give that up there. Oh, and I should mention... uh, I don't know if anybody else has talked about this on survival channels or anything, but a ferrocium rod that we talked about, the little toggle or the bigger ones that carry on my bigger knives that we'll get to, that's basically a soft iron and some other elements rod. You can sharpen your knife with it. Is it as good as like a diamond sharpening stone? No, it is not. But you can certainly sharpen a knife with a ferrocium rod. 
So I have a way to sharpen this knife and a way to make fire all in one. Anyway, that's a Topps Mini Tracker. That's, if I had to pick, oh, I'd be between that one and the next one I'm going to talk about. I don't think, I don't know that I would say that one's my favorite. I really like this one as well. This one is a Firecraft. As you can tell from the name, it's designed for kind of making fires and bushcrafty stuff. Ironically, that's what I use it for now, but I got it when I was making that big city money and I was the commander of a tactical team when I started doing the ground fighting thing with knives as a backup because sometimes your best emergency reload or the fix to a malfunction is to grab a knife, especially on the ground. So I grabbed this because it seemed like a good fighting shape knife it's a decent size that's not what i got it for but it's a firecraft 3.5 by white river good american made company i should mention the tops knife is also a good american made company anyway this is a fantastic fantastic knife last time i was out and stranded in the wilderness because i went on a trip and it ended up taking longer than i thought there were some rapids i did not want to navigate at night so i figured it was safer to stay out overnight well, I used this knife. Came in quite handy. It's a good knife. I think it's a really good balance of a defensive knife and a bushcrafting field knife. I would say for both of those tasks, it's slightly better than the Topps Mini Tracker. But it is bigger and heavier, so you got to kind of balance that out. But it's a good, classic design. It's a strong knife. Mine has been well used, well taken care of, but well used. It's a great knife. It is fantastic for starting fires. It comes with a fire steel. I have one on here. And this one, the good thing about it is the sheath is already made for a fire steel. So you don't have to do anything crazy like buy one of the toggles. It comes with it. And it comes with a really good fire steel. A good size that you can... It, well, let's just say it's much easier to start an actual fire with one of these size than it is on the little toggle. The little toggle on the Topps Mini Tracker is kind of break glass in case of emergency. I hope I have another way to start a fire. But if I really had to, I could. This one is like, okay, I want to start a fire. I'm going to grab out my fire steel, strike it with the back of this knife. The back of this knife was designed with a groove in it to hit the fire steel. It works really well. So it's not like a break glass in case of emergency. It's like a legit way to start a fire. Whether you get wet, whether you fall in the creek, whether it's been raining for two months or two days or whatever, the fire steel should still work. So on this knife, I also have the ulti clip. I carry it the same way, oriented the same way in my support side pocket. Continuity of training, right? Now this one doesn't need that pinky lanyard or the pinky ring finger lanyard that I have on other knives because it has a hole in the back of it, like a loop for your finger. So if I grab it and I'm shoving it into something really hard, I shouldn't have to worry about my hand slipping forward and cutting it on the knife. On this one, I upped my game and used Spectra for the fishing line. If you don't know, that's a super strong fishing line. Monofilament fishing line is already pretty strong for its size, but Spectra Spider Wire is a real common brand for this. It's about five times stronger. They say it's stronger than steel. Anyway, that's what's on this knife, and it also has a fish hook. On the fish hooks, I should mention that I recommend like a number 10 or maybe even smaller because you can catch a big fish on a small hook, but it's a lot harder to catch a small fish on a big hook. So a small hook, and I have it tucked again behind the ulti clip, between the ulti clip and the knife, so I unscrew the attachment a little bit. I put it back there, and I screw it down so that it's in there snugly and securely. I've been carrying these for years and I've never had one work loose or anything like that so I decided to go that route and put them in there correctly that I was that was something I was going to do I've been carrying these things a long time and it's not an issue so I noticed that there's a little teeny gap between where this fire steel this ferrocium rod clips onto the knife sheath and I happen to have some fire cord which is basically 550 cord with a wick in there think of it like a candle wick it's designed to burn. It's called fire cord. So I put a length of that in there, about as long as the knife sheath, because I'm already carrying the knife sheath, and it's not going to be any longer, take up any more room. So I put that fire cord behind there. So I have that for tinder. Also on there, I have some of that manila or whatever it is. Let me actually look up what I'm talking about. 
This actually says jute line. It's real common. It's real cheap. It's basically like your gardening line, but it burns really well. Anyway, there's a little bit of that wrapped on there. And again, I didn't start doing that until I got to the Pacific Northwest. I've always found it pretty easy to make fires, especially in like Arizona, Nevada. Stuff just wants to burn there. In the rainforest, you kind of got to make stuff burn. So you might not need that for where you're at. You also, like if you're in Arizona, you might not need a fishing hook because you may not be anywhere near where there's fish, right? You still might be able to use it for the needle, but you may decide to go with a needle instead of a fish hook. Anyway, there is that. And then very similarly on the bottom of this sheath, there's the two empty holes. I use that as a spool when I wrap some more of that micro cord. Again, enough to make this a neck knife if I want to hang it around my neck. And on that lanyard, much like the other one, I have that small titanium container in there. Again, there are 10, I believe, water purification tablets. Oh, and something I should not mention, behind these Ulti clips, there's a little, it's a, just a little flat clip. So on there, I put a sticker and I write my name and phone number in case I should drop it or lose it or leave it somewhere. If somebody honest finds it and they want to return it, they can call me. So name and phone number fits on there. They're the same stickers I like to stick on the wall and drive my wife crazy when I'm dry firing. So I have some. I stick it on there, write my name and phone number on it, right? I don't do that on the Topps Mini Tracker because that sheath is brown and I literally just write a Bible verse and my name and phone number. Or actually this one has my name and email address on the sheath itself. Which I guess I need to rewrite because it's hard for me to read. It's been in my pocket a long time. Anyway, that is a way to make your knives more utilitarian. And that's the base size knife that I generally go with. I did a whole other podcast on ultralight EDC. My ultralight EDC knife is a Benchmade bailout. It is my one and only Benchmade that I own. I bought it, again, back when I was making that big city money. It's super light, super handy. I got this to carry when I was a professional gunfighter. And it's a good knife, but again, if I'm fighting on the ground I don't know that I want to have to rely on getting that open it's not hard to open as far as folding knives go but I'd rather just grab plug and play as they say with a good fixed blade knife but it's a good knife and it's super light so I keep it as my ultralight EDC literally when I'm doing like high jumps on picnic tables for a workout or outside doing squats with my wife because there's not really a, a gym a lot of times where we are or I'm out doing wind sprints or going for a run or whatever, right? This knife is so light and handy. You could literally, and I mean literally because I do it, tuck it into a pair of silkies and you'll never even notice that it's there. I should mention, if you don't have a pair of silkies, forget about the knife. Get a pair of silkies first. Start training and then get a knife. Silkies are awesome. Anyway, this one also has that pinky lanyard on it so I can grab it and if I have time... And then I have less worry about it slipping backward into my hand if I'm shoving it hard into something. This is a Tonto, the bailout, if you don't know. It's basically designed for tactical applications. Of course, it will cut like any knife will if it's sharp. But that's basically what it's designed for. But wait, there's more. In the back of this, these scales, these knife handles, whatever they're called, they're semi-flexible. And they're just about the right width as a smaller ferrocium rod. So guess what? I shoved a small ferrocium rod back there. So generally my ultralight EDC is a Scandium Ultralight 357 Magnum and this knife. So there's that and I have a way to start a fire. That small ferrocium rod is not going to add enough weight that you'd probably ever notice. So there's that. It's on the extreme small end. Now let's go on the extreme large end of an actual knife. Quite a long time ago, I was so impressed with that Topps Mini Tracker I bought a Topps Tracker, a big one. This one is the number three. I still think it's a step down from the actual number one in size. It, I, I could be wrong about that, but this is a Topps Tracker number three. Anyway, this knife is a beast. This is the knife that you would want if you were hunting dinosaurs and you had to use a knife. It's a big knife. So big, it's, it's not part of my EDC, right? But it is part of my EDC if I'm going out in the wilderness and planning it. Like I said, a lot of times I just get like, oh, you know what? I've got a couple hours. I'm just going to take off my EDC and go out in the woods. I'm planning on, hey, I'm going out and I want a big knife. This is the big knife that I'll generally take for now. It's got that same shape. If you don't know what a top tracker is, you should probably look it up. People really hate the knife. Some people really like the knife. 
I was trying to keep an open mind, and the more I used them, the more I really, really like them. I like this knife. If I was designing it myself, I would do a couple of things different, but all in all, I really like this knife. Anyway, this one, the sheath is really cool. It comes with a way to carry it, scout carry in the center of the back. I tried that, don't really like it. I carry it the more traditional way on the support side. Again, continuity of training. It goes outside my pants, but basically in the same place that my other knives go. And it goes in the sheath. This sheath already has a place for a fire steel. So guess what? I put a fire steel in there. I also wrapped duct tape on both sides of the fire steel so it does not fall out if I go tumbling down a hill or something. And this one's super easy because it's got a pouch in front. And this is not, see how much stuff I can fit in the pouch, but I have quite a large bit of that natural cordage to start fires with. And I have a surgical scalpel because it's a very sharp, big knife. But if I'm trying to cut something out of my leg or something like that, a good, clean surgical scalpel is nice to have, and it takes up very little weight and room. Also in there, I have a big piece of, I would big, it's a large piece of that fire cord as I'm pulling it out. Again, for starting fire, but it's also a piece of 550 cord if I want a good, strong piece of 550 cord. Also light and handy that weighs very little or is one of those commando saws. Think of it like a little tiny chainsaw chain that you can use to cut down bigger trees like a crosscut saw. I can take the 550 cord, make two handles for it. I can pull it back and forth. There's that. And I have a little straw. If you don't know, I've talked about this in the tactical tips before. A little straw filled with tinder keep it dry. I also have two right in the rain pieces of notebook paper in there. I have found that they make some of the best tinder in a wet environment because they're they're wax paper which means even if they get wet you literally just wipe them off and they burn really well and really hot. So I and they take up again very very little. Wrapped up inside those two pieces of paper is a decent size piece of spectra and two right because we're getting a bigger knife here so you got two fish hooks on there come in pretty handy also my tactical top ramen flavor packet why because if you're stuck out in the woods and you kill something and you got to eat it you can but it tastes way better with salt and seasoning so i got that on there also more practically than that even if you have water your body needs salt so it's basically an electrolyte mix. I can use it to season food. I can also just eat a little bit of it if I'm starting to get enough salt. That's a real thing. You can drink too much water and not have enough salt. And again, it weighs very little. I could probably shove more in that pouch, but that's basically it. Make sure that's all that's in there. Oh, no, that's not all that's in there. Good thing I looked. There's actually, I have a very small that fits in quite handily. I have a very small diamond sharpening stone now i could sharpen it with the ferrocium rod if i had to but a diamond stone is really nice to have and this is a knife that i do work with like this is a knife that i have been using pretty hard and heavy and i am impressed with it yesterday i went out and i built a shooting range with this knife by god's grace there's no real shooting ranges around here but there's a ton of wilderness and woods I went and found some trees that were already dead, but I did hack them down and literally build a shooting platform with this knife and some of the cordage that was in there because I had that cheaper cordage that I mostly had in there for starting fires, but I figured why not cut some of that and use it to build a frame to hang my steel target from. Anyway, that is about it on talking about the knives and tricking out your knife. This, in a, this is a constant process, so... I am experimenting with another knife because this one is really big and heavy. And I only really take this if I think there's a good chance I'm going to use it. I would like to find something in the middle when I'm going out in the wilderness that I'm mostly going out to cover ground. It's light. It's handy. It's a good sturdy fixed blade knife. A little bit bigger than my smaller EDC fixed blades. It would be better for building shelter and things like that with but it doesn't weigh as much as this. If I think I'm going to be doing that stuff, I'll bring the tops tracker. It's awesome for that. But if I just want one because as a contingency plan, I'm part of my EDC. EDC knives will do it, but I would like to find a knife that's a little bit better in between. I may have found that. I may put that out for the patrons. Again, I plan on making a video on all this stuff. I'm putting that on the Patreon page. If you want to find out if I actually put that up on the Patreon page, you'll have to go to the Patreon page. 
You can get there by the link in the show notes. It should be there, or you can click on Good Shepherd Training and go there. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. With that, it seems like a lot of this was a tactical tip, like one tactical tip after another. But as a thanks for staying tuned, I'll think of another tactical tip. But I don't know how I'm going to top the tactical top ramen tip. So guys, I am not sponsored by any brands on this show. I'm not. The brands that I mention, I mention because they're either good or bad. Try to buy American when I can, when it's feasible, when it's a good product. There's a lot of those survival bracelets out on the market. Before I really upped the EDC game and made my fixed blade knives have all this stuff on there, thing that I would do if I was just going to grab and go, I've talked about the bailout bag, but if I was just going out to cover a lot of ground, then I wasn't going to take the bag. In times past, I would get one of those survival bracelets and literally just clip it onto my belt. I don't like bracelets. I don't like that kind of stuff. I don't like wearing it. I don't even wear a wedding ring unless we're going out somewhere my wife asked me to. I don't like like the neck knife. I just don't like it. So the survival bracelet, I would literally just take along with my knife and my gun and my normal EDC stuff, and I would just clip it onto my belt. That way I had it. They're not all created equal. Some of those are like $3 Chineseium things that aren't great. The best one that I found is the outdoor edge one. Generally keep that clipped on to my bailout bag and in times past, I don't now because I pretty much have everything or more that's on there in my pockets already. But if you don't want to go through all this and you just want a quick easy fix for that, maybe just grab one of those survival bracelets and clip it onto your belt. The outdoor edge one has a knife on it it has i believe a fire starter it has a whistle it has a compass so there's some utility there right it has a whole bunch of 550 cord if you have to unravel it so that's kind of an easier way to do the same thing if you had a larger knife you may just get one of those bracelets and literally clip it onto the knife anyway those survival bracelets especially the outdoor edge one that's your tactical tip of the day they're pretty cool don't like them as a bracelet i just don't like to wear bracelets but they do exist, and you could use those to up the ability of a knife by just clipping them on there or clipping them on your belt. The tactical verse of the day is coming from James. Come now, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell and make a profit. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even as a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away instead you ought to say if the lord wills we shall live and do this or that and if you may have may not have noticed in the podcast i try and live my life that way and i try and say by god's grace because whatever i do or want to accomplish in life it's only because of god's grace written in the bible without me you can do nothing without god i couldn't draw another breath Without God, I could not make another podcast episode or another video. And I don't know what the future holds. I don't know what will happen tomorrow. If I draw breath tomorrow, it's not because I deserve it. It's not because I earned it. It's not because I was a good planner. It's because of God's grace. It's because God chooses to have mercy on me and gives me that divine grace of being able to draw breath every single day. And... I shouldn't take that for granted because I've almost died several times as far as earthly standards go. I trust in God. He's gotten me through some pretty nasty situations, and I trust that if it's his will, he will again. But I try not to take any day for granted. None of us should. Every day we get to breathe is a miracle. Every step we get to take is a miracle. So instead of all this boasting, saying you're going to do this thing or that thing, try relying on God's grace because without him, you can do nothing. By God's grace, I hope to get out some video content on the things we talked about on this podcast to give some visual cues. Anyway, with that, men, thanks for listening, and have a blessed day. Postscript, by God's grace, that video has been recorded.